Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at exam style questions for the investigative skills practical. Hi guys, so in this video we're going to look at a few exam style questions based around the investigation practical we're looking at regarding the rate of photosynthesis. So the question here says, some of the students set up a photosynthometer to investigate how varying CO2 concentrations affect the rate of oxygen production from photosynthesis. They add different concentrations of sodium hydrogen carbonate to a boiling tube containing water and pondweed. So this is similar to the one that we've been through in the other practical videos, but with this time measuring how CO2 concentrations affect the rate of oxygen productions instead of light intensity. And the source of the carbon dioxide in this case is the sodium hydrogen carbonate, which we use in the same example that we gave as well. So part A says, describe the method to set up the photosynthometer for this experiment. This is an eight mark question, so don't let that put you off. Just think about the equipment that you need to use and the different parts involved and how you need to set it up from start to finish so that we're ready to record a fair experiment. So I'll show you what I've written for my answer. You can do it in bullet points or fluent text, it doesn't really matter. Bullet points can be good because the examiner finds it easier to pick up the marks, but whatever works for you is absolutely fine. So the first point I've said is that to set up the photosynthometer tubes, we need to run tap water gently through the tubes. So you can say run tap water and you could maybe elaborate and say that we need to remove any air bubbles. And I've also mentioned that it has to be gentle as well, because otherwise we end up with more bubbles than we needed in the first place. And then I said obtain a piece of pondweed and you could say cut this from the end and make sure it's the same size every time. Place the pondweed in a boiling tube and fill with water. You have to fill it with water because this is an aquatic plant. Allow the plant to acclimatize because it needs to adapt to this new environment and place it in a beaker of water. And you could also at this point say, look for bubbles coming out of the end of the pondweed. Keep the beaker at 25 degrees and check this using a thermometer. This is important because we're looking at how CO2 affects the rate of photosynthesis, not the temperature. So this must be kept as a controlled variable. Attach the syringe at the other end and then push it until the water leaves the flared end. So we've got a complete system where water is running through all the way. And then you place a light source near the plant so it's got the UV light with which to photosynthesize. And then we add the varying concentrations of sodium hydrogen carbonate to each of these that we set up. And then you place the flared tube end over the boiling tube so it can collect the oxygen gas that the plant gives off. And then you leave it for the allocated time. So you've just gone through the method that we always use with the photosynthometer. We've easily covered eight marks there, but don't get put off by the fact that it's a huge question. Just think about it in a logical order. And think about it maybe before you start writing because it's difficult if you remember a point you should have put at the beginning. But as long as you've got a general idea of how we set it up, these kind of marks and these sort of short sentence marks are absolutely fine. Part B says state the independent variable in this experiment. So it's a very quick answer and remember the independent variable is basically the one that we're deliberately changing to see how it affects the rate of photosynthesis. And in this case that is the concentration of sodium hydrogen carbonate or CO2, but it's best to be specific and that's the source of CO2 they're using, so it's best to write that down really. Part C then says, explain why each of the following techniques are used to produce fair results. So this is more of an implementation type of question. So number one is running the tap water gently through the system. The second one is taking the same mass of pondweed each time. And the third one is using a thermometer to monitor the beaker temperature. So it's basically asking for each of these, why do we use these techniques and how does it produce a fair result? So it's three marks, so you only really need a sentence or two per point, but just be specific and concise. So for part I, which was running the tap water gently through, I put that it removes any remaining air bubbles, which could be mistaken for the oxygen bubble. So try and say what this does, what does it achieve, and why do we need to achieve this? Because it then it covers that you've understood the point of doing it. So it gets rid of air bubbles because we don't want it to be confused with the bubble of oxygen that we're actually looking for. Part two was taking the same mass of pondweed for each experiment. And then obviously and that's regardless of the CO2 concentration that we use from the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So different plant masses will photosynthesize at different rates. So this is regardless of the other factors. So if you take a big lump of pondweed compared with a tiny little bit of pondweed, it will photosynthesize at different rates regardless of how much CO2 there is. And we don't want to investigate how plant mass affects the rate of oxygen production. We want to look at how the CO2 concentration affects it. And then the third point is using a thermometer to monitor the temperature of the beaker water. Again, temperature is a factor that can affect the rate of oxygen production, so we have to keep it the same. If we were measuring how temperature does affect this in our experiment, then we would keep everything else the same and allow the beaker to change temperature, but in this case we're not. So then it says, each piece of pondweed was allocated 30 minutes with a particular sodium hydrogen carbonate concentration. The results are shown in the table. So we've got on here is our independent variable, which is the concentration of CO2 in the form of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. 
and that's in molar, so always look at the units. And then we've got the length of the bubble that they measured for each one. And then they calculated the volume of the bubble using the cylindrical volume that we talked about before. And then they calculated from this the rate of photosynthesis, which was the volume per the unit of time that they allocated, which would have been 30 minutes. But we can already see that there's a couple of gaps here, so we can imagine it's going to ask you to fill in the gaps. So part D says, assuming that the radius of the tube is one millimeter, calculate the missing values in the table. So the first missing value is a volume of oxygen from a bubble that is 41 millimeters long. So what we need to remember here is that the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the length of the bubble. So the volume at this point is going to be pi, which is always the same, times the radius squared, which is one. So one squared is just one, times the length. And in this case, it's 41 millimeters. So essentially the volume is pi times 41. And if you put that into your calculator, it comes out as 128.74 millimeters cubed. And remember to always put the units on as well. So that's the first one done. And then it wants you to work out the rate. So there's a missing rate of photosynthesis. So logically this follows on from this. So remember to find out the rate. The rate is always equal to the volume that was produced divided by the time that that volume was produced within. So the rate is going to be 128.74 divided by 30 minutes. And remember, if you happen to have calculated this incorrectly and got the wrong number, if you still use this equation appropriately and use the number you got, you can still get marks for this. It's just that the actual number won't be accurate. You probably won't get all the marks, but you can get two out of the three. So the rate in this case is going to be four 0.29 millimeters cubed per minute and obviously if they gave that in hours you'd have to convert it to minutes or vice versa so we've calculated these two values and so we filled in the two gaps in the table so the next part says the students plotted a graph of rate of oxygen production versus sodium hydrogen carbonate concentration as follows so this is the graph showing what they've tried to compare so they've got their concentration of co2 down here and then they've got their rate of oxygen production here which is where it should be so it says describe and suggest reasons for the trend seen in the graph. So this is a five mark question. So we need to describe each part of the trend and give reasons for it, or you can describe it all and then give reasons. I think it's better to describe a part and give reasons as you go along, because then it makes more sense to the examiner. So I'll show you the answer that I've written. So first of all, I've said that if you look at the first part of the graph, I always start from left to right, essentially, and it's going up as we go up. So as the CO2 concentration goes up at this point, the rate of photosynthesis is going up at the same time. So I've put that initially there is a positive correlation between concentration of CO2 and rate of photosynthesis, or concentration of sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is because more CO2 can be obtained as the concentration of that increases, and so as a reactant increases, the rate of reaction increases. So this is just going back to the idea that photosynthesis is a reaction, and if we provide more reactants, it's going to favour the reaction in terms of the forward reaction, so it will produce more oxygen, and therefore the rate of photosynthesis increases. So this is exactly the same as light intensity or temperature. The more you supply, the more it can use. And then if we look, it starts to level off, and then it goes back down after about 1. So let's move on to the next part. It says around 0.8 to 1 molar, the rate plateaus as the limiting factors inhibit the increased rate. So this is when in the previous graphs we saw that there'd be a plateau because even though we've increased the CO2, the plant has more than enough CO2. However, the light intensity and the temperature is only at a set value and that would need to increase to allow further increase in the rate of oxygen production. And again, it's always good to quote data. So I've said that it was around 0.8 to 1 in this case. And then I've moved on to say that the highest concentration results in a very low rate of photosynthesis. So you need to suggest a reason for this. So we've said that about two, it's very, very low. So why could this be? So we need to suggest a reason for this. So essentially I've said that basically the um, chemical may have reached a toxic or a lethal level, which would then inhibit photosynthesis. So although you don't know exactly what the answer is, because it said suggest reasons, you're allowed to come up with something that's basically sensible and based on what you know. So obviously at this point, the CO2 isn't helping with the photosynthesis but it's a very high concentration, two molar is quite strong. So this might actually be limiting the enzymes or it might even be a trigger that's telling the plant that there's a toxic level of CO2 so it might actually shut down photosynthesis or it may just actually have damaged the plant from inside if its concentration is beyond a toxic level. So it's just something along those lines, it's a sensible suggestion that they want you to make based on the knowledge that you've read through your course. So moving on to the next part of the question then, the next part says suggest two improvements 
that students could make to their experiment to make the conclusions more reliable. So this is quite a general question that comes up quite a lot. You have to know a few improvements for every experiment and it's always good to think if you get stuck of thinking of improvements think about what the limitations and the problems are and then that could lead you to a logical improvement that one could make. So I'll show you what I've written. I've suggested that they make more intervals of carbon dioxide concentration because if you look at the graph they've jumped from one to two but it would be interesting to see if whether this does directly drop down or whether there's a particular concentration whereby the CO2 does become damaging or a problem. So they could do more intervals to get a more precise trend and the second point I've made is that they could carry out a control with zero carbon dioxide to compare the bubble lengths because there may be even in with no source of sodium hydrogen carbonate, the plant may still produce a bubble of a certain size, so it'd be interesting to compare that with the control. You could also suggest other points like making more replicates or using different masses of plants, but as long as you suggest two sensible ones, that should be absolutely fine. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.